So the report that I have in my hand is outside. It's labeled Impacts of Comprehensive Climate and Energy Policy Options on the U.S. Economy. Energy efficiency and I would say also industrial process improvement play a very critical role overall in the progress that has already been made in the United States in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and in closing the gap going forward. And what we did with this study was two things. We took a look at how far we've come already and then where we need to go and what the possibilities are based on the views of many thousands of people in the United States who have gotten together through comprehensive climate and energy action planning processes that have been convened by governors. And we took a look at what impact they would have if they were scaled nationally and then implemented through a combined set of actions at the local, state, and federal level. The starting place is a look at how emissions have actually come down in the last five years in the United States. And if you look at information that our Department of Energy produces, the uh, Energy Information uh, Energy Information Administration annual forecast of greenhouse gas emissions, the interesting thing is that every single year from 2006 forward, the projected rate of emissions going all the way out to 2020 and beyond has come down. And overall, it's fallen over 20 percent, a very significant decrease. And we know that that has been driven by a number of different factors. One of them has been significant actions taken at the subnational level here in the United States, state and local actions, and among them, energy efficiency and industrial process improvements, which have been uh, among the most important. But we also know that federal action has played a very key role. We have, in fact, seen significant federal action in the U.S. Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007, for instance. We've seen historic levels of public investment and energy efficiency through our stimulus bills. We've seen other actions taken in the last few years on energy efficiency at the federal level. We also know that the private sector has moved forward in the United States. And this is a very typical symptom of policy to come. We see markets mobilizing in advance of policy and deliberately as a way of shaping it. All those things combined have significantly reduced emissions. There is a very nice report that summarizes this progress produced by Environment America. They've done two versions. The most recent was updated just this last uh, few months. The documents, this drop in emissions, and the specific portion of that that has been driven by subnational actions. It's estimated at about 535 million metric tons of reductions through existing or formally planned actions. So the good news is emissions have come down. And this is beyond recession. We see a depressant effect in the short term on the recession, but the assumptions are by 2020 the economy comes back up. So it's really not a recession effect. The big question then becomes how much more can we do and how exactly to do it to close the gap for emissions in the United States. And so we took a look, as I mentioned, at comprehensive policy development processes that have occurred in this country since 2004. My organization, for instance, has been involved in the facilitation and support of 24 comprehensive climate action plans that have been convened by governors or their legislatures. And we took a look at those uh, results and we scaled them to all 50 states and then we looked at the economic security impacts of them at a national level. And a couple things that I would uh, draw your attention to in this report that focus uh, specifically on energy efficiency. Number one, there's a graph, the wonderful old cost curve that we're used to seeing. And there's an orange coated line, which is what we call residential, commercial, industrial actions. And the quick take is that all of those actions on a net basis have the potential to save money. In fact, quite a bit. Now, they require funding, require money and outlays to save money, but they have very significant potential for cost savings. And it turns out, as a consequence, very significant potential for expanding the economy. We've got some wedge graphs, and this one down here shows an orange wedge. It's tough to see from a distance, but that's the wedge associated with energy efficiency and industrial process. It's the largest wedge in terms of overall emissions reduction potential in the United States. And then we see a pie chart here, which is the assignment of authority and responsibility for emissions reduction by level of government. And we see it's almost evenly divided between local, state, 
and federal government. And so in the United States, the role of subnational policy development and implementation has always been critical in meeting environmental objectives as well as economic and energy objectives. So it should be no surprise that in looking at comprehensive approaches to reduce emissions, the partnership between different levels of government remains extremely important. And in fact, it's a formula for keeping the costs as low as possible and the co-benefits as high as possible. And when you get into the numbers, the nitty gritty, let me just show that the potential for reducing emissions from a combined set of activities in all sectors, this actually identified a top set in every sector, is significantly greater than the congressional targets that our country has been deliberating on. So there's enormous potential based on a comprehensive approach. And if you shine a light specifically just on the energy efficiency and industrial process improvement areas, we have two scenarios, a moderate and an aggressive scenario. The moderate scenario shows the ability, the potential for increasing net employment in the United States in the year 2020 by over 700,000 jobs. The aggressive scenario, it's over a million jobs. And in terms of the expansion of gross domestic product, the expansion is estimated on the aggressive scenario at being just shy of $300 billion in terms of an expansion of the economy. The moderate scenario is $178 billion. So clearly, there are enormous opportunities above and beyond what we have already done in the United States, and that has been substantial. The question is, what's standing in the way of moving forward? Clearly, this has to happen at all levels of government combined. It can't happen simply at one level. It's not a matter of the federal government acting and state and local governments standing still. And there are, very, there are a wide variety of barriers uh, to action that are really uh, standing in the way and the basis of policy development here in the United States going forward. Our next panel is going to get into some of the nuts and bolts of what it means to bring those barriers down in the private sector and how that translates specifically into program changes and policy changes that are needed to enable the potential that we see here in the United States. So uh, I'd encourage you to have a look at this. It's a great roundup of what is already in place and potentially what can be done to replicate, to scale, and to accelerate these efforts here in the U.S. And uh, we're doing similar work in terms of comprehensive policy development, interestingly enough, in other countries. The simple notion being that as you expand the number of choices and sectors and level of governments and tools that can be used for addressing the problem, it's easier to achieve economic energy and environmental security jointly.